Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I love you to turn your Bible again to our text, our team text, Jeremiah chapter 1. Are you in Jeremiah chapter 1? Huh? Right. And I want you to get down quickly to verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated or I have sanctified you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. I would like to stop at that verse 8. Understanding the irreversibility of your mandate. the irreversible mandate that God has placed on your life. But permit me to begin by noting a few things in those three verses or those four verses, verse 5 and 6, verse 7 and verse 8. You know, we dealt with necessary extractions in order for you to maximize your youthfulness. And one of that is that constant misconception as if the youth is not meant for action. As if the youth is not the essential segment whereby what God wants to begin to do can be done. But tonight, I'm dealing with the irreversible mandate that God is placing on your life to fulfill. I begin by saying it is irreversible 
because God is behind it. Because God is the one who determined it. Because God was not doing it by mistake. God was not doing trial and error about it. God, by his wisdom and his determinate counsel, had seen that even before you were brought to life. And the counsel of God concerning your life, nothing can change it. Hallelujah. He said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Do you have any problem about that statement? Eh? Eh? Is it difficult for you to believe that before he formed you, he knew you? Eh? I want that to be clear to you. And that before you were brought forth, before you were brought forth, out of the womb, he said, I have separated you. I have set you apart. I have consecrated you for a divine assignment. I have approved of you as my chosen instrument. And I have appointed you I have appointed you. Do you know that a passage like this was repeated but in the New Testament? I want you to quickly read it. So that again, you might not be thinking that well, that is about Jeremiah. It's not about me. Can you quickly look at John chapter 15? John 15 When you get to John 15 We are going to read verse 16 You have not chosen me Have you seen that? You have not got there yet I want you to get there very quickly John 15 and verse 16, what did he say? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I've done what? I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should do what? Should abide, should remain. And that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may do what? He may give it to you. I'm dealing with your irreversible mandate. Your irreversible mandate. That which God conceived before you were conceived. That with God had fashioned and planned for your life to accomplish. For which reason you were actually born. And so when Jesus Christ began to talk to his disciples and said, You have not chosen me. I chose you. And I have ordained you. You know the word ordain in that scripture is not the laying on of hands for ordination. 
I have destined you. Abi, is there any version that somebody can read for me and it's not the word ordained they use? I have done what? I have appointed you. Does that look like Jeremiah 1? Eh? And I have appointed you. I have destined you. I have put you in position. I have ordained you. I want you to hear God say, I have destined you to go and bring forth fruit. And it is not because you chose me, I chose you. There's an irreversible mandate that God is speaking about concerning each one of you. There's a divine expectation for which heaven has has set your life apart for. There is a definite contribution that your life is going to add to the purpose of God in your generation. And may I inform you tonight because as I'm reading from that scripture, from the Jeremiah passage, it appears clearly to me that it is irreversible. You will fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know why my spirit is so enlarged towards you tonight, but I know it was God. I said, God said, look at this one that you are seeing here. My mandate upon their lives is irreversible. It will come to pass. Yeah. I want you to know that the struggles that Satan had had over your life, the matter of up and down, rising and falling, is because of that mandate. You know, as soon as hey, Jesus was born, the wise men that could see, they saw that there was a star. Am I right? And they began to trace it. Unfortunately, the people among whom he was born, they did not see it. They did not understand so when the wise men came and that is very amazing to me because you know the other day I read to you I said when Moses was born his parents saw that it was what? a proper child and for that reason they were willing to sacrifice whatever they had to keep him because he has a mandate. And because of that, as you sit and say, so that there will be no deliverer among all these boys that have been born, let us just kill all of them. And when Jesus came, and they saw the star, those ones said, Kai, we have seen his star. Something great has been born into the earth. And when they branched to Herod, Herod was thinking in his mind as he was mobilized by the devil. I want you to remember that Herod. I hope you know the Herod. That's the Herod that was taking somebody's wife. That's the Herod that beheaded John the Baptist. That was that error that thought he was going to sit on the throne and be doing atrocities. 
he gave orders he said any child that is from two years and below and he said boy do what kill them why did they kill all of those ones whom did they what what did they want to kill they just want to kill that man jesus that's why they were killing everyone else there may have been so much struggle over your life there may be a lot of distractions temptations you know we spoke so much about marriage and because of what God is planning your life for Satan is saying let us see whether we can divert him or divert her through the bridge of marriage but God has risen on your behalf your marriages will be correct in the name of Jesus Christ now so the first thing I want you to know is that there's a mandate that God in his mercy and in his wisdom as he has marked that your life is going to fulfill and I want to announce to you it is irreversible God will bring it to pass Amen. but while God was making that announcement Jeremiah said ah Lord God Behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. You remember that we dealt with that, and I don't intend to go over it again. I believe that the Holy Spirit has extracted that from your heart. Has He done it? I trust God that it is done. I trust God that you will no longer say, I am only a youth. You will remove the word only from your vocabulary. You will know actually that this segment of your life is the essential years. It's the foundational years. It's the matrix of what you are going to be and what you are going to do and how you are going to do it for God. So you will permit me not to spend time on what the man said. Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. All that you thought was your deficiency or your predicament, God will handle it in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to focus now on what God began to say in verse 7. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth. That's the first thing I wanted to mark particularly tonight. Do not say I am only a youth. As regards your mandate and the things that God wants to do through your life, do not say anymore, I am only what? A youth. How old was David? when he rose to the challenge of Goliath how old 17 years he was 17 
when he rose can I remind you was Saul his age mate that time talk to me please were there people that was I mean that were older married in the army of Israel in those days can I tell you something that was very amazing to me according to the rule in Israel David was not yet qualified even to be enlisted into the army you don't go into the army until you are 20 and above but he was 17 so what would they have called him underage huh they would say he was underage and they wanted to intimidate him with it they said you know when he came and he was talking to the people his senior brothers do you remember what they can say what are you what, 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 what are you talking about there it's not a child's play why are you prognosing to a matter that doesn't concern you what are you here what did you come here to see senior brothers rejected men those that have lost their space with God And they were looking and saying, hey, the sheep that we told you to be keeping, whom are you left it with and you are coming here to come and sightsee? And the young man said, ah, ah, is there not a cause? And you remember in the morning yesterday, the Lord said, God must raise young people here who can see a cause to respond. God will show you a reason why you cannot lie down again. Amen. David was 17. He was not qualified to be in the army. When Saul sent to Jesse, he said, send me three of your sons who can follow me to the army. Whom did they present? Eliab, Abinadab, Shama. These were the people that God had already rejected. But they are the ones that are looking big enough. And when David said, is there not a cause? You think I came here for, for sightseeing? Why are you looking at me as if I'm a child who is just coming to play? Is there not a cause? And I remember his senior brother shouted and said, get out, get, get, go back home. You know what did the young man do? He knew his brothers. He knew that they were fire extinguishers. He knew them to be anointing killers. Eh? They are vision, vision consumers. What did he do? He just moved away from their side. And went and met another set of people and said, Excuse me, what's going on? Who is this man that is talking like this? They said, You don't know he is Goliath. I thank God for the young David. You know what David said? Who is this uncircumcised man? You know, as young as he was, he understood the covenant. He was young. But he knew that those that were circumcised, they have a covenant with God. And that's what made them more than conquerors. And as he was speaking among the people, he said, look, this uncircumcised Philistine. So what did the king say? What, did the king, what, is, what is our king saying? Ah. 
the bigger men there say, are you interested? He said, I want to know what the king said. He said, the king said, if there's any one man that can stand against him, because Goliath had said, give me one man among you people. If he can conquer me, then we are conquered. But if I conquer him, then you are all gone. This is why our king has been hiding in the cave for the past 42 days. Hey! The tallest man in Israel was Saul. And he was hiding in the cave. Do not say, I am only a youth. There are certain battles that God is tearing your heart to respond to. And you are saying, but the elders are there. But the senior lecturer is there. But this senior pastor is there. Why can't they do it? I'm still a youth. I'm only a youth. What did I hear God saying to you tonight? Do not say, I am only a youth. When there is a staring in your spirit. And as David in his youth he said what did the king say the king said if any man can face this man I will give him my daughter again David he, wasn't, he didn't come to look for a wife that was not his own motivation his own motivation is that there is an uncircumcised Philistine who defies the name of the Lord, who is abusing the army of Israel, as if there is no God in our midst. And that boy said, even if my seniors don't know how to do anything about it, I will arise. I will arise. Even if the experienced men, even if those that are advanced, even if the Methuselahs, ancient of days, if they don't know what to do, but there is a steering in my spirit, I will arise. If you read that story as we tried to study in the morning yesterday, you will remember that. That's how they took him. They took him to the king and said this young man said he will go and face Goliath ah. and do you remember how the king also looked at him what is the first thing he did about him he despised his youth do you remember that what did he do he said, you are but what? A youth. You cannot go and face this man. You are but a youth. What was that statement to say? That statement was to say, a youth can do nothing. A youth should do nothing. A youth she only play around. A youth should not dabble into serious issues that is affecting the kingdom. A youth should not concern himself with anything that is of consequence. A youth should just should just be a youth and do nothing. But what did I hear God say to you tonight? Do not say, I am only a youth. The mandate I'm placing on your life is irreversible. You will fulfill it. Yeah. And David, I mean, Saul so said, you are, you, are only, you are youth. You are only youth. But you know, 
immediately he betrayed he betrayed something he said you cannot see how the man was talking emphatically you cannot face this man why because you are only a youth and because this man is a mighty warrior he has been fighting wars since when now did you see the trouble now since when has Goliath been fighting battles for his master since he was a youth and yet something is saying you are only a youth go back go back to the bush go and sit back again go and play your ludo and your games get occupied with your handset and just be playing games and be watching film because youth is not meant for something serious when you become old then you can try to do something but the devil when as he started to engage his own young people to do battles eh? since they were young so can I ask you this night when will you begin to fulfill your mandate in life now you know when this this matter became strong on my heart many years ago I used to compose songs for myself people sing those songs now but I didn't compose it for the crowd I composed it for myself I will serve my Jesus now that I am young I will serve my Jesus, now that I am young, I will serve my Jesus. I composed that song for myself. It dawned on me that when is it for me to start burning? Is it when I'm old? Is it when I'm exhausted? Is it when my life had been finished? I hear God say to you tonight, do not say, I am only a youth. So when David, he had to first, you see, he had to overcome there are a few things you are going to overcome as we are going on now. He had to overcome what says inside of him, I am only a youth. He had to overcome that. To remind himself, if there is a cause for a youth to rise, then he cannot say, I am only a youth. I am ready to rise. And here is a cause a Goliath announcing and abusing the Lord God of Israel and despising the host of the Lord, there's a cause for me to arise. Is there a cause for any of you to arise here today? I'm asking a question. Is there a cause? Is there a cause for you to go and turn your campus upside right for God? Talk to me, please. Now, let me ask you. All the court boys, are they older than you? Let's discuss. Are they older than you? So why do you fear them? Why did they become a terror? On the campus. Why are they behaving 
as if they have advanced so much in age that they can command and other young people are running after them. Why? Some of you say, hey, it's because they have the power of the devil. Is the power of the devil bigger than the power of God that you have? The conjuring that they are making, and if you listen to them very well, you will know that they just they are just putting some psychological words together and creating intimidation for everybody, and you know, making some incantations and doing as if they are calling a spirit. Let me ask you: even if they were able to invoke legions of spirits, is the legion of spirits they invoke is it equal? To one word of power that God put in your mouth. So let me ask you, why did they become a matter and you are not the matter? Why? Because something tells you, I am only a youth. And unfortunately, even when some of you want to do something, some senior friends are telling you, you are, you are young. Go and sit down first. It's not time to do something like that now. You are still a small boy. And it appears as if it is humility to waste your youth. I thank God that David will not allow it. Can I tell you that all the people we talk about in the scriptures, all the people we talk about in the scriptures that shook their nation for God, I don't know whether it's because we read it as if because it has happened long ago, we did not know how to position their age. Can I ask you, when did Joseph how old was Joseph when he interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh and he became the second in command in that great nation that was the world power of the time who knows when he was 30 Listen, if a 30 year old young man decides to become the president of Nigeria, is it, is it, is it wrong? <laughs> but do you understand that the young man that turned the, the economy of Egypt? Because the Bible reported that there's an excellent spirit in him. He was only 30. He wasn't married. It was as he became the second in command in Egypt that they gave him a wife. But you will notice that coming up to stand on the platform at the age of 30 was not his first exploit. Was it his first exploit? No. So if we are counting his years, when did he interpret the dream that translated the butler and the baker? When? How old was he? He must have been something like 20, 28, 20 something. When do you think he was taken to the house of Potiphar and he handled the economy of Potiphar's house? When? He was 17. You know, I need God to open your ears and your heart tonight. That 
that at 17, because of the purpose of God for his life, as he was dreaming his dreams, this is what God is showing me. His brothers, what did they decide? They say, uh -huh. this small boy, are you saying you are going to be a ruler over us? They were undermining his youth. They were taking his youthfulness for granted. And they were capitalizing that because he's a small boy, how can he be having such a big dream of what God is going to do about him? This meeting we shall release you into your mandate in the name of Jesus Christ. But you see, as they thought that they can quench him, that they can kill what is inside of him, the Bible said, but the Lord was with Joseph. When you go to the house of Potiphar, the Bible said the man noticed that the Lord was with him. Am I right? And so he handed over everything to him. And whatever Joseph did prospered. The business of Potiphar prospered to the point that Potiphar's wife started to flirt about the young man. But that boy, he knew where he was going. I told you the other day, I said, it's because of that mentality, I'm only a youth that will make you give attention to useless things that make you to spend hours doing things that are irrelevant. That will make you give attention even if it is two hours, three hours onto such things that when you ask yourself what is the value of this thing for me? What is the value of it? You suddenly say there's no value. There's no value. It's because your mandate, that irreversible mandate, you did not take it to heart that even now that you are young, you can begin to access it. It was impossible for Joseph to agree to sleep with old woman. Eh? I can hear him singing. <laughs> I love him the way he sings. When, Miss, when, when Madame Potts, you know, I normally I call her Madame Potts because, you see, they call her Mrs. Potiphar, but she's actually Madame Potts. The short form of her name was Jennifer Potts. And she has been looking for how to put Joseph and his vision where in the port and she started instead of calling Joseph Joseph Jacob he said JJ JJ ah. And when the boy would go and say, yes, ma'am, 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 he said, no, 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 no. You are making me feel old. <laughs> Call me Jenny. I'm Jenny. <laughs> Jenny Port. Joseph will be doing his normal duty. This woman will dress loosely and say, Joe Jack, Joe Jack. I've been calling you, I'm dying for you. Ah. And Joseph said, I have a dream for my life. 
I have a dream for my life. My life will never waste. I have a dream for my life. 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 I have a dream. My life shall not waste. I have a dream for my life. My life will never waste. Say, madam, he said, No, that's what I don't like. Don't call me, madam. I'm churning. And if you don't know, the whole of my intestine is moved whenever I sight you. I feel conquered. Whenever I see you. In fact, I feel so unfortunate that I'm connected with Mr. Potiphar. I hate that surname. In fact, if you know the secret desire of my heart is to be Jennifer Joseph. And Joseph said, what? <laughs> I'm seeing a pot here. <laughs> My life is not meant for this pot. Madam Pot, look for someone else. The Bible says she was making eyes to him every day. She was rolling the eyes in the socket 360 degrees <laughs> ah it's because you don't know if you have ever may god deliver you from those 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 women with eyes eyes ah, they call it eye contact eye contact they can roll their eye from this side to this side and if you have seen it ha ah, you are in trouble but when they are doing their eye like that, close your own. Close your own. Because you are going somewhere for God. Are you going somewhere for God? He was only 17. When they began to arrange this for him. But the young man said, no. I could lose my clothes I will not lose my dream I will not lose my vision on the lap of Madame Pot I'm not meant for that pot I'm going higher she told a lie nobody investigated it that's how they took Joseph Joa into the prison no problem. The Lord was with him. As soon as he got to the prison, he became the leader again. The prison warder does not know anything again, just handed over to him. So he was in charge of everything. What is it? It is the thing the man carried that cannot be reversed. There's an irreversible mandate. That God is placing on your life. Now permit me to go on quickly because I just need to set these issues tonight. Because I want you to start praying. I want you to start accessing your mandate. You are not going to go back for this meeting to go and sit down again. You are going on fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. That's where I want to anchor tonight. All 
that I have mandated you to do, you will do it. All that God had ordained, had prepared and arranged that you will do, that you will carry out, he said, you shall do it. He said, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Hallelujah. I was looking at that verse 7. I said, so what's the essence of this particular verse? First in the life of Jeremiah, and in my own life, and in your own life. What is the essence of that passage? Number one, I hear God saying, do not say I am only a youth. Do not downgrade and devalue what I have put in your life. I have had to respond to this scripture many times in my life as I was growing up. I remember, you know, when you were listening to the story in the, in the marriage tape, I told you about the persecution that I used to, I went through for several years, 12 years, because I gave my life to Christ from my family. Because the way I repented, and the way I will not tolerate anything of idol worship, anything of oracles, anything was a threat to my father. And I knew that power engages power. I know he himself is powerful in the realm in which he operates. And I remember going to God and I said, Father, I know my father has power with the devils. Can you give me power also? You know, I'm a young man, but in the house, I see myself as a leader of a party. I'm a leader for the kingdom of God. He is a leader for the kingdom of darkness. And power, <laughs> pass power. So one day I prayed and they said, you can confront this power in this house. I said, ah, oh, but I'm a young man. He said, no, 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 no. I am with you. I am with you to deliver you. So you know what I did? I set up a prayer time. I had another younger uh, cousin that has repented and has been praying with me. I said, we are going to pray. So we, we were fasting. We are not fasting so that uh, the lecturer can, have, can mark you even when you have not written anything. That's not the kind of fasting we are doing. We were fasting and praying that God is going to depose the reign of darkness in my own extended family since any time my father wants to talk to me in those days he called me at 4 a.m when i also want to engage him i said sir i'd like to see you tomorrow morning 4 a.m <laughs> yes you know one of the things that i discover is that when i began to act as if i'm a very matured man my father began to take me seriously. I said, we are, I, I want to have a meeting with you 4 a.m. tomorrow. He said, oh, 4 a.m.? He said, I will be there. When it is about 10 minutes to 4, I've already got ready. I'm going to be waiting there. Ah, didn't you sleep? I said, no, I slept. But you know, I said, we are meeting at 4. So he will come. He would sit down. He said, yeah, Billy, what, what, what is it that you want us to discuss? Then I'll pull out my small Bible. I said, Baba, I've been talking to you 
that there's something that I don't want you to miss. Nobody has dared him like that before because it was a terror in the entire clan. Everybody feared him. So Jamel, army officers, top, top commissioners of police, chiefs and kings, they come to receive power. Pastors, they come to my house to collect power. Who are you to confront him? So as I was praying, the Lord said, you can, you can engage the whole family. So I told Baba, I said, we're going to have a meeting uh, when we talked. So I sent message to all members of the extended family all through. I said, there's an important meeting on Saturday at the family shrine. 4 p.m. Can you imagine that? <laughs> the message was going around. Everybody, all those women that were married out, all those my uncles and aunties, everyone. Some were in Lagos. I said, Lord, can you bring them? Because I want them to hear this matter. Can you imagine? All of them were arriving. And you know they thought it is their uncle that has invited them. So they will all go to pay homage in the family shrine to say, Baba, we have arrived. They say, I, I didn't call you. They said, no. We got a message. He said, yes. As you are hearing, that's also what I'm hearing. <laughs> you mean it is him that is inviting all of us? Say, yes. He only told me 4 a.m. this morning that there's going to be a meeting, so I'm also waiting for that meeting. Everybody arrived. I've never seen such a large family meeting. As I prayed, I said, Lord, those that are in Badagri, I want them to arrive. A day before, they were all arriving. I said, ah, so God, you can answer my prayer. And as they were coming in, I said, there's a meeting tomorrow, there's a meeting tomorrow, there's a meeting tomorrow. The whole family shrine was jam-packed. So Baba stood up and said, well, I'm surprised that all of you have been brought here. I don't know the issue. Let us ask him who called us to tell us what exactly is the matter. That's how they asked me. So I stood up. <laughs> you are going to be a radical for Jesus. Yes. Do you know what I did then? I may not have been able to do it now. Because now as an old man, sensibilities will not let me do it. I will say, well, you know, you know, but that time, there's no consideration. So when all of them sat, so I now stood up. And I said, so I greeted them the way I normally should greet elders. I said, there's a matter that I have been chewing in my heart for a long time. Ah. And it is the condition of our family. And there's a question I have not been able to answer that is causing me to cry day and night. They say, what is it? I say, it's a very terrible question in my mind. All of them say, what is it? Tell us. I was keeping them in suspense. When I knew that they were all ready now, I said, it's a matter of where is our family going to end? End like how? <laughs> I said because the Bible say ah they said so is it Bible you brought us all here for? I said no, it's not Bible. It's a matter that you cannot escape. 
And we have to set to it here before you all go here. By the time I began to speak the gospel, oh my God, I have provoked the demons. I saw the eyes of some of my senior rolling red. One stood up. I will beat you from here. This nonsense. Everybody said, no, no. As he has called us, we are sitting down. How can you beat him? We must hear what he has to say. Uh -huh. It was a serious confrontation. But you know, when I finished, I said, the only answer is that this thing that we are worshipping in this house, it has to go. What benefit has he done to any of us here? Ah. Fear grip everybody say, stop that. This is the thing that we have worshipped for all the years. It is what we did and we gave back to you. Are you going to destroy it now? My father got annoyed. He stood up. He said, listen, stop it. All these people you see, they are mine. And none of them will cross over to your side. Since you have decided to say you are following that Jesus, you can go. But none of these will follow you. When he finished, I said, and for your information, all these people that you are seeing here, they are mine, they are for Jesus. <laughs> Including yourself. <laughs> mm. Of course, the meeting became scattered. It was as if there's going to be a serious quarrel. Different people started saying, Talk. we didn't know that that's what you are bringing us for. This is our own father. He's our own uncle. We cannot leave him in what he's doing. We have to follow him. I said, no. You can't follow him. You must follow Jesus. It was a confrontation. But, though I did not see anybody repenting by raising up their hand that day, huh? something has happened. I didn't know. It was two days after I was in a taxi. I entered a taxi. I was going somewhere for fellowship. Some people were in the taxi. They were discussing. He said, ah! Hmm. This thing that some of these young people have, seen, have, have, have carried now, they call it Jesus. Can you imagine this Akanis song? They didn't know I was in the car who gathered everybody from all the city and told his father that his father has to repent and stop doing what he was doing if he will not go to hell. Can you imagine that? They were discussing. I was in the car listening to them. And I said, eh? -huh? You mean he said that? And I said, eh? -huh? This thing that they have received has turned their head now. Their head has turned. And I said, oh, but... Maybe, maybe that is important. Then I added my voice. I said, yes. If a man does not repent, he will not go to heaven. They said, what? So I preached to those who were in the, in the... They didn't know I was the one. I just enjoyed the obscurity that I have done something that the whole town were talking about. I want to inform you, brother. I want to tell you there are certain things that only the youth can do for God. There are certain adventures that only the young can carry. 
And if you don't do it when you are young, it will be a deficiency on your CV. When are you going to demonstrate the exuberance, the strength that God has placed in your life? We saw, we saw God walking. One of my cousins that had been demonized and he has left home for years, he will never come back. Something has scattered his life. We began to pray. So as I was praying, the Lord said, I will bring him home. So one day I just, he just came back to the house. Everybody was wondering, how, how did he come? How did he come? And the Lord said, but you told me to bring him. When everybody was greeting him, I called him. I said, brother, I prayed for you to come. It's because what is pushing you up and down, only Jesus can deal with it. And I thank God. I forgot that he was very, very senior to me. You know, when you are standing in what we are talking about, the boldness of the grace of God will subdue the young, the old men before you. So as I was telling him this, he looked at me. He said, believe what you are. You are a young man. You don't know what is happening. I have struggled. And I said, yes, I know it. That's why I'm calling you. Jesus said, if the sun shall set you free, you'll be freed indeed. If you want to be free now, I'll just lay my hands on you and you'll be free. Ah, he was wondering. But you know that afternoon, he gave his life to Christ. I got him a, a Bible to read. And up to now, he is a pastor in a deeper life church. It was not when I became a preacher. Do not say, I am what? I am only a youth. For to all that I will send you, you shall go. That's what God is saying to you tonight. Your mandate is irreversible. What God has ordained for you to become, nobody can change it. And you will arise and say, Father, that which you set me apart for, that which you deliver me from the power of darkness for, I will fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. we we'll stop there tonight. That each one of you sitting here tonight, the things that God has set your life for, you will do it. Yeah. You see, for tonight, the prayer I want to pray for you is not, it's not, it's not a little prayer. It's that God, what this boy was born to accomplish, he will accomplish it in the name of Jesus Christ. The extent to which this young man, this young sister, must go to fulfill your mandate on his life, on her life, she will get there. That's what I saw God saying to Jeremiah. He said, never you say I'm only a youth. Everything I am speaking to you, you will do it. 
everything I'm instructing you for, you will go and do it. And I'm with you to deliver you. You don't need to be afraid. So tonight, two issues of prayer. Just two issues. You see, there are a few things that we have been dealing with since we started. We have been dealing with the entanglement of sin. We have been talking about distractions. We have been talking about discipleship. We have been talking about excellence in your academics and all of that. All of this is because there's an irreversible mandate on your life. All of this is because you were born not to be used by the devil. Am I communicating with you? And even if you say, but, but I, didn't, I, 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 didn't, I didn't plan to come to this meeting. I know you didn't plan. But God's purpose for your life is what do you hear? The jealousy of God is very high over your life. Because the mandate that heaven set that your life must accomplish cannot be reversed. So we're going to deal with two issues of prayer, just two issues for tonight, and it's not going to be a long prayer. If you have understood what God is saying, you will again search through your mind everything and ask, what is it that remains? What is it that is not part of what I was born to be that I'm entangled with? When our brothers were leading us and the sisters gave their testimonies about their choice in marriage and all of that, and the sister, the Sanyenka, said when she was at 300 level, she was pleading with God, what is your vision for my life? Do you remember she said that? And God began to speak about what a future she will enter. And I'm happy. I sat behind, I was listening to that message, I said, yes. And I've watched them walk into all those things that God is speaking concerning them and I still know there are greater things they will walk into by the grace of God. But that God is saying, you, do not say I'm a youth. So when people are coming and say, I have entered into a relationship that is, I know it's not from God, I have entered into a relationship that is scattering my work with God and I'm going to say no to it. I was just, I almost came out to just begin to shake your hand and say, praise God for that. Tonight, go and write straight away. Send a text. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The boy I used to keep, I keep him no more. And then, and then as, you, as you finish that, you now say, you now call him by his name. Kunle. The things I used to do with you, I do them no more. Send that text tonight. I'm sure by tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., he will call back and say, What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What are you thinking about? And you tell him, I am pursuing my mandate now, and you are not part of it. You are not what? Part of it. In the morning when our brother Dr. Onoja began to speak, I was dealing with how to be decisive with sin, with anything that can hinder you. Just say, cut it off. This night, that's the first consideration. You are going to say, so what is it that is around me that is not part of my mandate? What is it that I have got to carry along and is not part of my journey? What is that thing that does not add? It doesn't add. It has not added anything 
to the fulfillment of my mandate, I am deliberately cutting it off tonight because I will no longer linger. I can no longer linger. Tonight is a critical night for me. I can't linger again. My mandate, I must fulfill it. It's irreversible, so I can't joke around it again. And I cannot say, you know, I'm a youth, I'm a youth. How can you say you're a youth? When you are already, every day, your years are increasing. Do you know that you're already older today than you are yesterday? Am I communicating with somebody? Ah! And how can you be saying, hey, it's not time for me to do something? When your own classmate is already serving the devil with all his life, you are going to take a decision tonight. That's the first consideration of prayer. Anything that is not part of your purpose for my life, any habit, any sin. You see, this night for me is one of the final points at which you are looking at sin. Look at sin. Koro Koro in the face and say, It's enough. You can't tie my life down anymore. It's enough now. Now. And that anything that is not part of it, any habit, any friend, anything. That is only wasting your years, wasting your opportunity, wasting your capacity, wasting your strength, wasting your emotions. That is eating you inside. It's, 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 it's drawing something out of you. It's making you less than what God wants you to be. He keeps saying you're a youth, you're a youth. How long will you be a youth? You are going to say, Lord, tonight. It is not a matter, it's a violent thing now. Your mandate is irreversible and you dare not play with it again. That's the first consideration of prayer. And you are saying, oh God, from this night. It's not just that I need counseling. I'm going to act. I'm going to act in obedience. I'm going to act in obedience. My repentance tonight is an action. An action. Thank you, Jesus. That's the first consideration of prayer. Oh God, help us tonight.